Okay, hi. Uh, welcome everyone. For the, I think uh, I recognize most of the people in the, in the room. So welcome again. Uh, if people don't know, don't know me, uh, I'm going to tell you. Uh, first I'm going to talk about uh, Jenkins 2 Watson U. Uh, that's my name. Um, Baron Brandy Sarah. Uh, my daughter's friends ask that if they come, if they come to our house. Hey, Baron Brandy Papa Sarah. It's because I come from Scotland, that's why. Um, I do computers and things. Um, like I think everybody here, uh, but especially uh, interested in cloud and continuous deployment, and I play guitar. And no, no presentation would be complete without pics of my dog for some light entertainment. Um, can you guess what I'm holding in my hand at that point? The cookie. Food. Food. An orange. Dog's mad about oranges. Anyway, we're going to talk about Jenkins. So, um, CloudBees, the company who sort of commercialise, uh, commercially exploit Jenkins, they say that Jenkins is uh, an extensible automation server built on the JVM with hundreds of plugins to support nearly every continuous. Okay, boring. Um, I see it as a continuous integration scheduler. So, all the jobs that you have in continuous integration, Jenkins is there. Jenkins doesn't do your builds, Jenkins doesn't do your uh, tests, Jenkins doesn't do your code coverage, Jenkins schedules all the stuff via about one yard, uh, one billion plugins that you can get for Jenkins. Uh, see it's a scheduler for continuous integration. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this talk is a quick recap on what we understand by continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Uh, we see building software in Jenkins one point ever, how it used to be done. Um, we're going to talk about Jenkins 2.0 and what's changed and what's better. Then I'm going to do a quick demo, hopefully a better one than the, my last uh, presentation. Uh, and then we'll have a quick uh, ROM thread. So, quick recap about uh, continuous whatever. Uh, and when I say continuous whatever, so you've got continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. All pretty much the same thing, but just taking it a step further. Um, the, when you're doing continuous delivery, the, what you want to be doing is software-defined everything. So you're, that you're not clicking. <laughs> yeah, so with continuous delivery, you want to be um, not clicking things together. You don't want to be clicking in an interface trying to make things. You want scripted. Uh, installs for everything that you do. Software defined everything means that your work is predictable, it's efficient, it's secure, and it's maintainable. You've got software defined infrastructure, you've got software defined testing, software defined storage, software defined data center. Any other software defined things anyone can think of? Software defined networking? Software defined, uh, I thought software defined software, software is software defined. But anyway, everything that you do is um, as code version didn't get to give us the predictable, efficient, secure, maintainable. Every, every tool that you use in your continuous delivery chain and environment should be... We are in <laughs> My code. <laughs> everything, everything should be uh, scriptable. But unfortunately, there's one, one that's not very scriptable, and that's, uh, that's our, our Jenkins. Because even though... Jenkins lets you run everything uh, as a scripted software defined environment. Jenkins itself, in the current one point version, has always been uh, pretty much that you have to click in an interface, you have to install loads of plugins, click them about. If you've got two plugins that don't work well with each other, then it's going to blow up in your face. And uh, so that's, that's not so good. Get back to Jenkins. Jenkins is supporting the CD, CD pipeline, continuous deployment pipeline. You need it to be 100% automated, but that automation needs something to schedule it, and that's Jenkins. It needs to schedule your testing tools, code coverage tools, artifacts, or, or uploading the artifacts to, for instance, Artifactory or uh, Nexus. But Jenkins is also good for reporting, because uh, it's, one thing with Jenkins is I've always said is it's absolutely butt ugly. Um, but it, it is, does a good job of, of making uh, reporting so that you can see it later. You know, you can uh, run something on a central server, it's not running on your laptop, and you can go back a few weeks later or a few days later 
to look at results or anything else to see results of what you've what you've done to build. It's also graphing and here's alert. So what, what uh, we commonly do and I think most people do is uh, just say you've got a build. When a build's complete, then you'll get a Slack message on your on your phone or whatever. A, you know, a special Slack channel to see the results of the builds. Any questions so far? Or any comments? So far, so good. So just a quick look at the uh, continuous deployment pipeline. Fairly scrum teams working, committing to the code repository, running tools like automated testing, quality testing, also peer review, get it to integration testing, and at that point it will be uh, making a copy of your build to go to your um, artifact server. And then finally to UAT and finally to production. And you can put it in lots more stages obviously. But let's talk about Jenkins. Um, as I say, it's easy to download, easy to install, um, very quick on any platform. I was actually annoyed because Paul, he got his, when we started working with Jenkins, he had his working on his laptop a lot faster than me. Just shows how easy it was. Anyway, once you've installed it, you get a blank screen, so this is, this is great. It's not very secure, but uh, there we go. Um, the Jenkins 1.0 will automatically install some, some plugins. If you want. Well, actually, they say Maven, but I was installing it last night and it didn't automatically install Maven. So, that's a lie. CBS installed Subversion, not Git, not LDAP. So this is, this is pretty wrong. Anyway, they installed some plugins. So, if you were going to build and release some software, how would that look? Plus you create a job. Oh yeah, if you were, sorry, if you were to create and build um, software in a Jenkins pipeline, because Jenkins had a pipeline before uh, that was again a plugin that talked with lots of plugins and crashed very often. And what you would do is you make a number of jobs, Jenkins jobs, and each job was a stage in the pipeline, and you could link together the jobs. You know, from one job it would trigger to the other, and trigger to the other. Very easy. Except if you try to do any parallel builds. It would work, but it looked again extremely ugly in that particular interface. But what you would see here is uh, so as a post build action, you'd say you'd have one one particular um, job would be your test job, and then after that you would get a deploy job, and you would build the project or build these two and look a little bit like that. Oh, I don't know if I've very good order, I've missed out some stuff. What would happen is you would get um, a pipeline sort of display of the jobs that you've made. So from one step to the other to the step to the other and you would see it nicely in coloured blocks or not nicely if you had parallel jobs. So that's easy. Uh, loads of options, millions of uh, plugins that break each other, and that was the same for Jenkins. I think Jenkins has been going for about five years, but that's just a rename and a fork of uh, it's it's Hudson. Hudson, that's the one. I keep thinking Travis, but that's different. Um, so five years of Hudson, then Sun took it over. Uh, sorry, Sun were um, part of the project, then Oracle took over Sun, and Oracle said, right, we're going to have this for ourselves. It's not going to be a typical open source project, so they forked it and made uh, Jenkins. So, so what's the status of Hudson? Hudson uh, does change, Hudson does get updated, but it's, uh, it's dying off. If you're already using Hudson, then you might want to carry on using it. And the plugins for Jenkins are quite commonly compatible with Hudson, but it'd be unusual if you were to choose Hudson now, there'd be no reason to. You might want to choose Travis, or you might want to use uh, <coughs> Uh, what's called CD now or one of the other tools, you know, there's various reasons, but I think Jenkins is about 90% of the, the, the landscape. Go hey, CD. Hello. Hey. Oh. We just started. Fridge is here. In the corner. So, but Jenkins is low maintenance, you know, I've been, uh, I set up a Jenkins server for someone uh, more than two years ago and they, uh, I went to see them a couple of weeks ago and they're still using it, they've not changed it, they've not done anything, it's just 
just keeps on working. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Um, so, like I say, set it, set it and forget it. But now we get to Jenkins 2.0. They've had a lot of time to think about it because Jenkins has got to update because uh, you know there are other people coming along to eat their lunch. You know the the, the cloud-based uh, tools like Travis or CD Now or other tools. Who everybody wants to be at the centre of the continuous deployment world. You know, uh, for instance, GitLab, which is my favourite uh, repository ever. Um, they also want to be at the centre. So there's all these tools. It's an exciting time because all these tools want to be at the centre of all that's happening. So Jenkins 2.0 is. Um, Jenkins' attempt to, to be at the centre. So with 2.0, what they tried to do, they want to have a pipeline as code front and centre. So what we saw before was on the whole with Jenkins 1, it's clicking stuff together, and with Jenkins 2, um, they want to make the, 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 the continuous integration tool, continuous deployment tool, also as code. So what I said before, all the other tools that you're using are uh, configurable as, as code. Jenkins wasn't. Well it is now, because now, now what you do is when you make a job, it's just a very simple job that mentions a Git repository and from then on it's a script that's kept together with your source code. Also in Jenkins 2.0, the out of the box experience is better, because what I said there about it not being secure, if you take a standard Jenkins install, it gets installed without any user management and I still have difficulty every time I set up a new server. Uh, trying to work out how, how it works again with the, 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 the uh, setting up users and authentication and stuff like that. So they make that a lot better with Jenkins 2.0 that when you make a first start, it asks you for an admin password and uh, you can immediately start setting up users properly. And the user interface, so this slide is from, from CloudBees, they say user interface improvements, it's a bit better but it's still pretty ugly. Pipeline. Uh, so, first, any questions or remarks until then? Okay, pipeline is code. What does that look like? So, um, they've introduced a new uh, a new type, the pipeline. Similarly, to where if you're using uh, Maven or uh, if you're using Maven or Ant or uh, Gradle, you have, for example, a pom.xml file to see how your build works, and that file stays in your uh, with your source code. Now you have a Jenkins file. And that stays also with your source code. So that Jenkins file is the code of the Jenkins configuration for the job. Another great thing is to do uh, resumability. If you had some, some people's Jenkins jobs are huge and take days to run, especially if there's uh, authorizations happen. Uh, and if it crashes, if your server gets upgraded or it crashes or someone stops the job, then you have to start all over again, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but now with Jenkins 2.0, you have a resumability. It means if a job's got to a certain stage, it will restart per stage. So if a stage fails, you can fix the reason that the stage is breaking and uh, restart. And you can extend the DSL. So the DSL is a Groovy-based uh, language. Are you going to tell more about Groovy? I'm going to show, well, uh, here. <laughs> I'm not going to tell a lot about Groovy because I don't know very much about it. I'm, I'm very much of take someone's example of how they've done it and, and change the words and, until it works. Um, so this is uh, the DSL. It looks like this. So Node, that will be if you have, for example, this is Node Docker. So if you have your Jenkins slave running on Docker, uh, the, the Node command will say run on that uh, slave. Then it's uh, at that point, it will check out from your source code management and then run the, run the commands. So in fact, it's, it's a groovy based language, but if you look at my scripts, then it's all basically just shell commands. So shell command, do that, and whatever. So not a lot of groovy, but lots of shell commands, but still, still seems to work. And in the interface, it gives you the reference, uh, the, the, the documentation for the, for the pipeline. Jim, there's, there's a pipeline in, in, in the pre-professor Jenkins, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's, maybe that's a good point. So there's uh, a claim, uh, a little bit of uh, history involved. So with Jenkins 1.0, you had the pipeline plugin. So that was a standard <coughs> plugin. And to do what I said was um, uh, bringing the stages together, putting uh, stringing jobs together. That was the, the pipeline plugin. 
So Jenkins thought, okay, we want to do something better. So they made a, uh, the, the DSL and they called that Jenkins Workflow. So you had the pipeline, which is a plugin, and Workflow was the language, the Groovy language based. But the marketing people must have got a hold of it and thought, we don't like that workflow, everyone's talking about pipelines. So they now call it Jenkins 2.0. They call the, using the, the scripting language, uh, they call that Jenkins Pipeline. So the difference between one, one and two. Yeah, I, on GitHub there was quite some uh, noise, people complaining about Groovy. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm not experienced with Groovy, can anyone uh, comment? Is it good or bad? Not good. Don't they didn't like it. Well, this can be learned by everyone, apart from DSL. I've experienced of teaching developers, system administrators, Groovy DSL, easily understood, and you can script with it. So. Maybe it's not the best language you would choose, but for Jenkins it works okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, especially people, so I'm coming from a system ad, sysadmin background, so for me it's like, oh god, you know, how does this work? But if you're a Java developer, then Groovy, you're a lot, a lot more at home with it. So, hey, DevOps, we're all one big happy family. We're helping each other out. So this is what the pipeline uh, looks like now. It looks a lot nicer than the, than the old one. Uh, you, you define the stages, so build, deploy, test, promote, but these are just flags that you give or uh, um, uh, what's the keys that you give, uh, you, know, you could have 20 different stages and it would make that with your particular names in it. And this is the one that's been running, you can see this particular pipeline has failed at the unit test, so that goes straight back to the developer who then has to explain to all his colleagues why, uh, why he's made a failing breaking build. So they say better out of the box user interface. It's a bit better. Oh yeah, so this is what you see when you start up. When you first install, uh, it's already asking you, so you don't have to look, you know, do you want to use the standard plugins, uh, a pretty useful set of plugins, yeah. or, uh, or even at that point already choose what you want. And it goes and installs them, it's great. So this is, this is the bit that looks new and exciting, and then when that stops, it goes back to the old ugly Jenkins interface. Yeah, I mean, it looks almost exactly the same, but this is actually nice. So these tabs here, these tabs, uh, where you, if you had a complicated job, it would be an enormous long page you had to skip through. But these, these tabs are basically just shortcuts. These tabs are shortcuts to further down in the, in the page, which is pretty neat. Yeah, the new item page is a bit more rounded. And the consistent terminology, I don't know, I've not had a chance to experience mm -hmm. that. Oh yeah, is anyone else using 2.0 already? Yeah, what do you find of it so far? Mm -hmm. How do you find it so far? The more to get the started. Yeah. Okay. My best is things like 35 to this get it even started, which yeah. in my opinion, kind of insane. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, it works nice. Take it well, use the most. Yeah. It's not that much work to um, rebuild your jobs with it. Yeah. No, I know I started, I, I tried it out about a year ago when it was still called the workflow plugin, and I kind of liked it, but, um, I still came across so many limitations that it just got annoying at the end. And I thought we come back. Sorry? You still need the green balls plugin. The green balls plugin? Yeah. I don't like the balls. Plug yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you remove all those uh, plugins in Domi? Plugins in Domi is okay, you can always remove them, but you need the 35 dimensions you need. And it still wants to install more plugins when you first uh, launch it. Anyway, thanks for that. Um, I deleted this slide. I don't know how it's come back. This is boring. I like them already, aren't we? Okay, great. That was fast.
I said, do you know anything about these points here? What are talking about storage and availability? Because um, I'm just using it about here, but they're talking about uh, reduced local disk dependency and storage pluggability. Do you know anything about that? Oh, okay, I've not come across it yet either. But in principle, if I see this, bring your own data back end, that would be quite nice if you could uh, have it in another, another database. So what I have here, I have a git checkout of a git clone of uh, the ticket monster application. Does anyone know the JBoss ticket monster application? Yeah. Okay, so uh, JBoss, Red Hat, JBoss, they make uh, lots of demos for their application server. And one quite nice one is the ticket monster. And that looks a bit like this. So I've set up a pipeline. Uh, first of all, look at the traditional traditional build. So how would I do that in, in old style Jenkins? If I look at the project, then uh, I take out the, the GitHub repository. And then run uh, a Maven command to clean the environment, and then another command to uh, create a, a, a WAR file. And then remove the previous deployment, and then install the, the newest deployment of the, of the WAR file. And then what I uh, didn't add to this one is then run an automatic test. If we then look at the pipeline build, how that looks. If I configure that, it's actually a lot simpler because, like I said, there's nothing else really than um, the name of the repository and the name of the, the file that you're going to run it in by default, the Jenkins file. And that's, that's everything. So then if we look at the Jenkins file, which is stored along with the source code, You see this is my nice copy and paste pipeline file. So first I'm going to do an, uh, an echo, just to show that it's working. And then we, we name the stages. This is what, where, you see, where you saw the blocks on the screen. Uh, this is where we name them. Uh, the checkout actually happens automatically, so there's nothing happens there. Then we do the clean command. that length here at the uh, workspace before I actually uh, go and build again. Then uh, create, so there's the Maven package command, it will create the, the WAR file, and then we'll deploy it, and at the very end uh, we'll run Selenium tests on it. So let's see if the demo gods are with us this time. Does this run locally? This is running on my server upstairs. Sorry? In the cloud. My, my private gym, gym cloud. <laughs> oh, actually, I've got a VPN. It's a very low flying cloud. So you see he's checked out successfully. He's done the clean command successfully, which is good. Wire file has been created. It's been deployed to JBoss and it's now busy running the Selenium tests. No, it's 2.0. It's uh, part, I mean, I don't know if it's actually a plugin, but it came when I chose the automatic thing, uh, automatic install. It was there, and I actually don't think it's a plugin. I think it's uh, you know they make it really core to the product. Right. Nice. Sure. Was it 2.0? Yeah, with the with the one version you had to install. Right. I'm just trying to work out the difference between two. It looks like the GUI's. Who's better? And, and actually, this is nice. Uh, this is nicer than I thought. You see each uh, stage of the pipeline, um, you can actually see the individual logs for that part. And I know that I used to get eye strain running through the, the, the Jenkins log file trying to find something. So this actually break up the log files as well. Are you 
usually directly opened it to see where it was because there was no, yeah, there was a status bar that you couldn't see. I always, always, if ever I would click on build, I knew I was going to do. I, I, I've got it in the muscle memory, like build, console messages, click, show, yeah. uh, every time. Yeah. Um, so actually, what you, it's, it's really nice because you see the individual parts of the, the pipeline code here. So uh, this is the whole stage. And then this is the print message. Yeah, great shell script output. Fantastic. It's a lot. That, that is a lot better. Anyway, we've got a successful job. We've run the Selenium scripts. It's now got a newly deployed ticket monster. Chris doesn't actually believe me when I say that I've run a Selenium test on that. Forty-seven seconds. Come on. Watch. Okay, can have. So this is the Selenium job that I just run, and we chose to run it on Linux with uh, Firefox version 45. So we can see these old Selenium. Is everyone familiar with Selenium? No. Okay. So Selenium is a um, uh, uh, front-end testing for websites. So you can make scripts. You can make a Selenium script. You can make a Selenium script, and then. Uh, so, for instance, if you run Selenium on your laptop, which I have here, Firefox, just disappeared. What was that? Usually, if you run Firefox, uh, I would see my Selenium tool. <laughs> you can run it on your laptop, and uh, it will take the commands and it will turn it into uh, web commands so that your browser will go and do stuff. So, you can um, tell your Selenium, you can record a script. So you can record clicks, but you can also verify text that's on the page. So you can say, if I click here, I expect to find this text on this part of the page. Um, so what, then, then I've saved, I saved then the, the, the output of my Selenium session. I save that also into my source code. If you look in the, so you've got the Jenkins file here, but I've also got a Selenium JSON file. And this, for instance, click element. That's to say, click on uh, the link with buy tickets now and uh, here verify text present. It expects, after I've clicked on option 3, it expects to find that text and if it doesn't, it'll error. So it's all in the Jenkins file? No, it's not in the Jenkins file, it's in the Selenium file. Uh, the Jenkins file calls the... the Jenkins file calls it, so this is, I just have a little shell script to run the Selenium stuff here. Okay, so um, you would, if you're doing it, if you're recording a script, you would do that on your laptop. If you have a Selenium cluster, a cluster of Selenium servers, then uh, it will run on that cluster. Or if you're lazy, then you run it on a cloud Selenium service. Um, you can click around and call actions. Yeah. Like yeah. You 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 you, you, you record your file. You then hand it over to the Selenium cluster and it will run them. And the great thing about that is you, your Selenium cluster can be uh, Mac OS, it can be iOS, all different browsers. You just specify which OS, which browser. So you can run the same, exact same test. So you might, have, you might have changed a PHP script and you want to be sure that it runs on all possible platforms that your users might be using. So you can say, I want it to be running on latest versions of all browsers, all, all OSs, and also a few older ones. And the plugin you're looking for with Firefox is actually recording. That does the recording, and then it saves the file. It saves the so-called Selenium Builder file, and that text here. Th th this is it. This is the output of the uh, the Selenium Builder tool. Yeah. Yeah, you can have that server locally to do it. Or so the server can be on your laptop, or it can be in your own, your own uh, environment, or it can also be in the cloud because it's a great tool that comes with um, so Source Labs. In the same way, that, in the same relation <coughs> that CloudBees is to Jenkins, then uh, Source Labs is to Selenium. So Selenium is a free product that lots of people work on. There's one company that exploits it commercially, and uh, they are called Source Labs. And they basically have in the cloud just an enormous, um, enormous uh, Selenium cluster. So their, you know, their whole job is making sure it's updated all the time with the newest OSs, the newest, newest browsers. So if I log into Source Labs, then I can actually see each. Each command that I did, I can see the result of it and how long it's taken. Uh, it's also got screen dumps for every 
every step. So that's step that now is screened up. So every time there's a, a screen change, you get a screen dump. Mm -hmm. So it's clicking all the way through uh, Ticket Monster until it gets to the end and it expects to see that I bought three tickets and it's going to cost this much. But what's even more awesome about the Source Labs is. Uh, so this time you ran on Source Labs uh, service? What you just saw, this is the result of what we just ran uh, in this Selenium farm. So you uploaded it to Source Labs? I uploaded the. Uh, the WAR file? No, no, not the WAR file. The, no, no, the WAR file is local. It's local in my cloud. How do they connect to your server? They connect back in, they've got a back roads and set up a SSH tunnel. So what's happening is Source Labs is running on Amazon and uh, they make a tunnel. I run a command, uh, the source, source Connect command, and that creates a tunnel. Then the Source test can tunnel back into my environment and get to the, uh, the JBoss server that's running ticket once. And that's the result of the, of the build. So we've seen various stages, we've seen the, the, the checkout, the build, uh, and the testing. And you can put in as many steps as you want, and it, it looks nice, it's easy to do, and I like it very much. How do you update the uh, Selenium script? Say uh, you have more feature on your applications. Yep. And you add uh, more updates on your Selenium script. Yeah, so... Um, and you also automated that on uh, Jenkins? Uh, no, but you'd have to, by hand, change the sliding script. So you can, you can in, in the, the, the builder tool, the tool that you use to build your Selenium scripts, uh, you can read the files back in. I can maybe even show it. And you save the file. Yeah. And even better, that these, these files are saved along with your source code, so it's versioned, which, which I think is a really great great thing about it. To restart Firefox. Okay, so use the Selenium Builder. So I can I could just start recording. Uh, you can just say uh, google.com No, that's not a very good one. So this is now recording, and all the clicks I click on, it'll record them, and then I can record a verification. But even more fun is if I open my previous file. So this is the this is the file that we just saw that ran the, the tests. Okay, so now you see it in the Selenium interface um, the the previous run that we've done, and you can actually just add to this. You could you could go here and go to the end and actually just say run again and record again. It will start putting commands at the end. Or if you like, you can, uh, you can just edit. If you're confident enough, you can just edit the, the, the file because it stays a text file. Another question? Yep. Can the, in the script you saw text, this text to be multilingual. Can you get your text from your uh, repository with translation? Maybe, don't know. So we have this repository with strings? Yeah. German, Dutch, Finnish? Uh, yes, no, no, uh, yeah, sorry, absolutely. Finnish is, for example, very long. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely, strings. because um, the, what you see here is, so verified text present, yes. but this could also be a variable. So it might be that you have to do something that makes multiple scripts, like you, you might uh, put in a, 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 a token, that then replaces it, and then just every time you run it, it'll create 10 Selenium scripts. But yeah, you can do that. The is not the test text on the screen, but the class. Yeah. Okay. 
Got it. I thought so. Yeah. Can you do that by the same way? Okay. Yeah. 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 Out of material. Any any other questions or comments? We've got plenty of time. The oh, apart from the fact the pieces have arrived. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do. It. In in your uh, Jenkins files, so it calls out bash scripts. Yep. And those bash scripts are in your. Uh, Hang on a sec. Wait, let's get up. They were saved in your uh, Git repository. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, here, this one is cheating, this one, because um, uh, I'd not worked out, because I was busy with it this morning, I'd not worked out how to, uh, I'm going to the Source Lab server and I've got my credentials, and I don't want to put my credentials on GitHub, so I just cheated by using a shell script here. But normally, if you, if you were using uh, bash scripts, you would definitely keep that along with your source code, yeah. And just scroll them from the Jenkins file. Yeah. You will execute them. Yeah. Okay. Where do you store the kit password? Can you use it from the Jenkins? Jenkins, uh, at this stage of what I'm doing, which is very simple, uh, I don't need a password because I'm just using HTTP. You only need a, you only need a Git uh, hub password if you're using uh, SSH. Yeah, in Jenkins 1.x, you could use the Jenkins credential store. Yeah, yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh no, actually that's a good question. No, sorry. Okay. Here's how. Yeah, so here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, but as you, as you see here, so you can do that. I'm using HTTP just because it's simple. Um, it's normally do credentials, but for the pipeline, it doesn't have the same thing, I don't think. Because what they have, they've got something else for that. Where did it disappear to? Oh, yeah, that's the Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. What they also have uh, with Jenkins 2.0, I've not used it yet, but there is a, a secrets capability. So you can uh, define files to hold passwords and, and stuff like that. But I think most people here, if I look around, most people here would be wanting to use. Um, Fault. Because I think most people were at the uh, fault discussion. Got well, uh, Vault from HashiCorp. Uh, vault from HashiCorp, so that's, that's really good for, for holding that sort of information. So then I would look at, in the Groovy code, get from, from the vault all your uh, secrets. But there is some, some secret mechanism in the new Jenkins. The pipeline you're showing on the screen, is that the same pipeline that you'll see in the text file? Yeah, same pipeline. So in the text file, you actually have the git details as well? Uh, I don't know what, that's a mistake. It's a mistake. That doesn't need to be there. It doesn't? Yeah, it doesn't. Well, we thought you could just define all the pipeline that you're going to be from It could well be that you want to have a, a git check out. It could well be that you want to have a git check out here. But uh, I don't need it right now. Yeah. Okay. In this, uh, in this instance. So they fill in the link of all credentials. Uh, yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. So that would work just as well. For the pipeline, do you use the pipeline interface to do the basics and then take it from there? So, so you say again. I can use the interface to put together your script. 
Um, well, I would just normally. Okay, so you, you've got you've got two options. There's only like a new one. So what you can either do is edit it in here, and it will be part of the job. But most likely, you'd not want to do it here if it's getting at all complicated. And uh, take it from your source code management and use Atom or whatever editor. But what you have is. Uh, the snippet generator, and that just gives you um, oh, examples. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, this is quite handy. So does it support the full uh, feature set that you have in the graphical user interface of 1.0? Sorry, I can't hear you very well. Does it support the full feature set that you have in the graphical user interface uh, of 1.0, like uh, selecting loads by labels and all that stuff? Yeah, so um, it, if you've got a plugin that you really like, uh, so the idea is you do your stuff in, in the Groovy script. Uh, but if you've got a plugin that you really like, it's really compact and you don't want to rewrite it in Groovy and there's not already a, a method for it, then uh, you can actually interface two plugins that exist. As long as the plugins have been written according to the Jenkins specifications from the last uh, couple of years, then uh, you, you are able to interface with it. When you look on the Jenkins website and you see the list of plugins, it'll actually say whether it's uh, uh, pipeline enabled. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm uh, ready for pizza. So thanks for thanks for listening.